Hey guys, welcome to Bambi TV. We're going to be reacting to shocking truth about Pharaoh revealed in the Quran, Miracle of Quran. Guys, let's get straight into this. Rational of believers. <laughs> In 1881, the mummified bodies of about 50 rulers and elders of ancient Egypt were discovered in an area called Deir al-Bahri. Among them, there was the body of the most notorious tyrant ruler of the ancient Egypt, the pharaoh in the time of Musa alayhi salam, Ramses II. After almost one century, when French Socialist President François Mitterrand assumed power in 1981, France asked Egypt late in the 80s for the mummy of the Egypt's pharaoh so that it would conduct a string of monumental processing experiments. So the body of Egypt's most notorious tyrant was issued a passport and transferred to France. And strangely, the French president and his ministers as well as senior officials in the country lined up near the plane carrying the pharaoh's body and bowed down to him as if he was still alive. After the ceremony of the royal-like reception to Egypt's pharaoh were over, the pharaoh's mummy was carried nearly in the same red carpet reception way he received. Then the mummy was transferred to a special wing at the French Monument Center and renowned archaeologists, surgeons, and anatomists started to conduct a study on this mummy in an attempt to delve into its mysteries. The senior surgeon and the scientist in charge of the study of this mummy was Professor Maurice Bucaille. Maurice Bucaille was born to a French parent, and like his family, he grew up as a Christian. After his secondary education, he joined the Faculty of Medicine in Paris. Later, he became the most renowned and cleverest surgeon in modern France. But this story happened to change his life completely. While the professors were busy in making restoration to the mummy, their head, Maurice Bucaille, was thinking otherwise. He was trying to discover how this pharaoh died. When late at night he concluded his final analysis, the remains of the salt stuck in his body was a shining evidence that he had drowned and that his body was retrieved from the sea swiftly after he drowned. It was also obvious that they rushed to mummify his body so that his body would remain intact. But Professor Bukail puzzled over a question. Maurice was busy conducting a final report while thinking as to whether the pharaoh's body was recovered from the sea and mummified immediately after he drowned. But one of his company whispered in his ear saying, there's no need to rush about this issue since the Muslims say that this pharaoh did drown. At first he vehemently rejected this and did not believe it citing that such a discovery would be reached only through sophisticated, modern and accurate computers. Another one accompanying him surprised him even more when he told him that the Muslim's Qur'an in which they believe narrates the story that says he drowned and his body remained intact even after he drowned. He got more surprised and kept on asking where did the Muslim's Qur'an quote this data from? while the mummy was not discovered until 1881. And considering the fact that the Qur'an has been recited by Muslims for over 14 centuries, and that until a few decades ago, the entire mankind, including Muslims, did not know that the ancient Egyptians had mummified their pharaohs. Maurice Bukail stayed up all that night, gazing at pharaoh's body, thinking deeply of what his fellow researchers told him about the Muslim's Qur'an, explicitly establishing that this body was recovered after drowning, while the Christian's Gospel 
narrated only the story of Pharaoh when he was chasing Prophet Musa السلام, without mentioning the fate of his body at all. He thought, is it believable that Muhammad, peace be upon him, knew this over a thousand years ago while I have just discovered it now? Maurus spent a sleepless night and asked for a version of Torah, but it only furthered Bukhail's astonishment, since even Torah did not narrate that the body was recovered and remained intact due to the processing and restoration which it did undergo. France sent back the mummy to Egypt in a splendid glass coffin. But since Professor Bukail knew about the story circulated by Muslims about the intactness of this body, he decided to pack his baggage and travel to Saudi Arabia where a medical conference happened to be held with a community of Muslim anatomists attending. There he told them about his discovery, that Pharaoh's body was kept intact even after he drowned. One of the conferees opened the Qur'an and read out the verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said So today we will safely deliver you with your body, that you may be assigned to the ones succeeding you. And surely many among mankind are indeed heedless of our signs. In his excitement, he stood before the attendants and loudly said, I have converted to Islam and believed in this Qur'an. Furthermore, in 1880, Gaston Maspero, director of the French Institute for Oriental Archaeology in Cairo, arrived in Egypt. He chose a site in South Saqqara for his first archaeological dig. During the excavations, he was able to gain access to subterranean rooms and discovered that the walls of the structure were covered in the hieroglyphic text. Keep in mind that these ancient texts have been inaccessible for thousands of years and only were discovered less than 200 years ago. Until 19th century, no translation were available as these were all conveyed in hieroglyphics. In 1969, Egyptologist Raymond Faulkner presented his translation in English language. We had no knowledge about the contents of these writings prior to this. And here is where it gets mind-blowing. In utterance 553, an ancient pyramid text, there is one passage that talks about the death of a certain pharaoh. Read it carefully. And look how the Qur'an directly responds to this when discussing Fir'aun in Surah Al-Dukhan. Neither heaven nor earth wept for them, nor were they respited. Nor were they respited. In fact, the prediction of the preservation of Pharaoh's body 14 centuries ago and the Quranic response to the ancient text showing the mythological adulation, which was unknown to the people until 19th century, is again pointing to the fact that this book is the words of all-knowing creator 
who is aware of the destiny of the entire existence. say a lot it was a lot of information and I believe that it was written in the Quran and the story of her uh, a lot of stories about a lot of stories in the old testament were still written in the new testament but with a little more detail so I don't know I don't know really know what to say but I feel I know that this I know that in it was written in Bible that more um fair wounds his body won't decay and it will be preserved for generations to come. So that was also written in the Bible, but I don't really know why he didn't say it there, but and that was also written, but I really don't know. I understand the fact that it was really important too, and that is the fact that I won't deny. And I I see there's there's something that I can say based on my Faith. If I accept Muhammad being a prophet, claiming means I'm a Muslim, you see, and if I, I won't say the Quran isn't a book from God, and I won't say it is, I will just be in the line between it is not and it is. I'm not, I'm... I don't I feel I don't have enough information for me to stand in any of them yet. Well okay, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel. Please let the kids in the comment section. I'll see you next time. Best.